So right now we're going to set the machine up to do acrylic welding. So just to show you, the wedge should always have a little bit of play in it. You should always be able to move it up and down just a little bit. We never want to tighten the two bolts on the back of the wedge. We always want that little bit of movement there. Check it while it's cold. And now all the other adjustments are done. I've checked my pin, I've checked my up and down, my left or right, my in and out. When I'm doing acrylic, what I like to do is I like to move the wedge up so it's touching the top wheel just a little bit more than the bottom wheel because I have to heat through the tape to make contact with my top layer of material. So I like to have just a little bit more tension up top. So right now I'm hugging that top wheel a little bit more than the bottom wheel. Once I do that, I like to swing the wedge in and out a couple times and just see how everything looks, see how everything's swinging in, and that looks good. So after I adjust the wedge up a little bit, now I want to take the wedge into the weld rollers. So right now, I can actually wiggle the wedge just a little bit. So I'm going to start moving it closer to the wheels, still a little bit. I want to get contact with the wheels, and then I just want to take it in just a couple flicks of the wrist, two more turns, and that should be the right depth of the wedge for acrylic welding. So now, with the wedge adjusted, we're going to put our guide in place. 3 16 Allen wrench, make sure everything's locked down. Alright, so now we're going to load our acrylic tape into place. What I like to do is I like to actually put a small angle on the tape, and that'll help it feed through the guide a little bit better. So we'll go down and around right here and we'll go on the bottom tape feed of the guide right here. Not actually our top overlap piece, but the tape feed. So now, I'm going to show you a case where the wedge is actually too far away from the weld rollers. So we shouldn't get a weld right here. That wedge does physically have to go into the wheels and make good contact. When I load my tape, I like to put a little bit of tension and then just roll out the excess. I don't want any slack running in the tape. Hold the material all the way through the guide. And I'll stop a little bit short, we'll cut the tape. It's melting to the one side, but not very well on the other side. So that tells me my wedge is too far away from the weld rollers. So now I'm going to show you the wedge going in too deep to the weld rollers. So we just showed you too far back. I left the heat and the speed the exact same. Now I'll show you the wedge going in too far. So it looks like with the wedge going in too far, it almost pushes the wheels open, so you're not getting a good contact. The pressure kind of goes away and comes and goes for the weld roller pressure. That's if you're going in too deep. So now I have the wedge adjusted correctly with placement, but I have too much heat, and I just want to show you what that'll do to a weld. It will probably break the tape. If not, it'll get the material nice and shiny, and we don't want that to happen. So let's just see what we get. It takes the bottom piece, and you can see how shiny it is. It almost took the grooves in the natural material and kind of ironed everything out and flattened it, which will give the tape nowhere to grab onto. So that is too hot. So now I have the wedge adjusted perfectly. I have the right heat, the right speed. I'm going to show you what a good weld should look like here. Pull the, pull the slack out of the tape. 
We'll just run a small piece here. Make sure we follow it through all the way. Stop a little bit short so I can cut and peel. So this is our good weld. And that's exactly what I want to see. I want to see the tape coming out of all the highs and lows of the material. Almost like you took a piece of big league chew and smashed it on the material and you're trying to pull it off. That's exactly what a good weld looks like. A couple things to remember about acrylic welding. After you do your wedge adjustments and everything is set up perfectly, run a small practice piece. 12 inches, uh, 18 inches, just run a small piece, check your welds. Uh, your darker materials, your hunter greens, your navy blues, your blacks, are probably going to take a little more heat or less speed than like a light green or a, a, a light blue or a white. Always, always, always do a practice weld and check it. Make sure you're getting a weld before you start any job.